Alright folks, welcome back. In this video I'm going to be going over density. Okay. Now, uh, once again, here is the notes that you can get off the website about density. Uh, remember, density equals mass over volume. Uh, the way that I remember density equals mass over volume is remember the words Department of Motor Vehicle. I know, it has nothing to do with this, but sometimes it helps to remember. And if you look here, here are some common units. Uh, grams per cubic centimeters, often referred to as cc's. This one is grams per milliliter, and this one is grams per liter. Okay, grams per milliliter, grams uh, per liter, and grams per cc or cubic centimeters. All right, guys. So since we have this brief uh, recap, let's go ahead and talk about some things. Now, when we're uh, doing this calculation, we're not just going to do a simple plug and chug of the formula and we're done. The way that we're going to work our problems is we're going to use dimensional analysis. We still need to know that density does equal mass over volume, but we're going to do it using dimensional analysis, meaning a cancellation process of lining up units. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're done looking at the notes. Uh, there's the website, and uh, notice it's whitwillhigh.com jcantrell forward slash chemistry dot html, and I am uh, working out of the chapter one notes because I realized uh, that I did not make a video for this, so I'm back making a video for density. Okay, so let's go ahead and look. I can close this and get this out of the way. Um, here's the two problems that are in the notes, so let's go ahead and get started with this one. Um, one thing that you do want to realize is um, you will never, ever start with density in any of these calculations. Meaning, in the dimensional analysis, it will never be it will never be the one that you will start with first. Okay, you will use density as a conversion factor, meaning it's somewhere in, in the uh, steps of your dimensional analysis. Maybe the second, maybe the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. But just remember density will never be in the front. Okay. Now another thing that you would want to concentrate on is make sure that your units make sense. In other words, if this one here is milliliters, make sure this one's milliliters. And notice that grams is the only one that has grams. Okay, there's nothing weird else running around like kilograms, so we're good. So that's one thing you always want to make sure. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with this problem. Now um, first thing that I'm going to do is pick a good color that we can all see. Um, when I read through this, they're asking me to find the mass of the seawater. Okay, so I know that my mass unit for this problem is going to be grams. Now the reason I know that is they told me this was the density, and remember, density is some mass over volume. Okay, so I know that the ml is the volume. I know that the grams is the mass, and here they even come out and say that this number here is volume. So which number are we going to start with first? Are we going to start with with the 103, uh, 1.03, which is density, or are we going to start with the 225, which is volume? Well, if you remember what I told you earlier, we will never stop. We will never start first with density. We will always start with something else, like mass or volume. Well, sure enough, it's volume in this case. Let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, we have 225. milliliters. Now that little fire sign might be getting on the on some of uh, people you know some people's nerves so I'm going to turn it off. Alright now I want to put this number over one. You will always put your given over one. Now the next step in dimensional analysis is to put the milliliters in the bottom in the next step. So if this is milliliters here down here will also be milliliters. Now the only thing is the only thing that we can use that's left in this problem is the density itself and remember I told you to use density as a conversion factor and that's what we're going to do here. Okay so if this is milliliters here notice that the units of density is grams over milliliters then I'm going to put the gram up here. Okay that's a G. I know it's an ugly G, but that's a G. So I'm going to put the 1.03 up in the top with the G. Okay. Now, down here, I'm going to put the number 1. 
Now the reason I'm putting the number 1 down on the bottom is notice that this is G slash L. Anytime they give you slash something, the slash something is always with a 1. Notice that the 1.03 goes with the G. That's the way it always is in math. You will always put the number that's given in front with the letter that's on top, the numerator. Okay, that's why the 1.03 stays with the G, and the reason why I write 1 ML here is so ML has a number with it. Okay, now here is something that we need to notice. Notice that this ML will cancel out with the ML. Now the numbers stay, but the units of milliliters will cancel out, leaving us with grams. Well, the problem asks us to calculate the mass, and we just did that. Okay. So we're done. All we need now is a calculator. So let's get a calculator. I'm going to use my TI-83 Plus uh, on, my, on my Linux machine. And my Linux machine has uh, TI-LAM on it. So that's what I'm running if you're wondering. Okay, so I'm going to punch this in. I have uh, 2, 2, 5 times uh, 1.03. Okay, and I want to hit enter. Now notice that there is there is not another number down here to divide by because I would be dividing by 1, dividing by 1. So this is my answer. So I'm going to go ahead for the time being and write all that down. I've got 2, 3, 1, point seven five. I think that's right. Let's look at the calculator and make sure. Uh, 231.75. Yes, that was correct. Now there's one thing though we need to figure out what was the units. It's grams, so i got to put a G here. Well, there's still another small problem. I can only have how many sig figs? Three, because in the beginning I had three, and on the other number in the beginning I had three. So I can only have three sig figs. So this is going to be 232 what? Grams. Grams of what? And in this case, it's going to be seawater. Now, please remember I'm using a mouse. I'm not typing this out. I don't have a fancy uh, pen or anything to do this for me. It's all free-handed with a mouse. And it's going to look ugly, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, this would be our answer on this problem. And we would be finished with that one. Okay? Now, let's look at this second one. The second one is worked just almost the same type of way. Notice that on this problem, uh, they're asking us for the density. Okay. Notice that they give us grams, and notice that for the mass, and notice here, they're giving us cubic centimeters on the volume. Well, remember, density is mass over volume. So all that we need to do is we need to p basically put these two numbers over each other. Now, remember, it's mass over volume. So the one point... Uh, 24 would be written down in the numerator. 1.24 times 10 to the sixth grams. And believe it or not, that is a G. Okay. Divided by my volume, which is 1.38 uh, times 10. to the 6. Now if you look closely that's cubic centimeters. And this is one of the most common units used in density, grams over cubic centimeters. So that's okay. Now what I do need to do is I do need to show you how to enter this into the calculator. So let me pull up my TI-83 on here. Remember this is TI-LIM. It's on Linux. It's also available for uh, Windows. And I believe Mac as well. Anyway, this is the way you should enter this in. 1.24 second comma that shrunken down capital E is times 10 to some power in this case it's to the 6 divided by 1.38 times 10 be second comma times 10 to the 6 now I know a lot of you math majors out there are saying hey just mark out the 10 to the 6 10 to the 6 just mark them out you can do that but I'm trying to show everyone how to use the calculator punching it in correctly Okay, notice that I only have one denominator and that one denominator does have a times 10 power. I do not need a parenthesis here because 
the TI-83 Plus will understand how to do this correctly if you will use the exponential E form on the calculator, the second comma option. Okay, So when I press enter, I end up getting my answer. Notice I get this big long number here, uh, 0 0.89855072 uh, four six. I need three sig figs, so I'm going to write down 0 0.899. Okay. Now, depending upon your professor, some of them will tell you to round the even number up to the nine, and the more traditional professors will tell you to go ahead and keep 0 0.899. Eight, because remember, if it's a five to the right, you do not round an even number. With my students in high school, uh, we stick to traditional rounding rules. Okay, but when we're in the lab, we uh, will discuss about you know the possibilities of causing large error by just rounding up every time. So let's go ahead and write this down. Uh, for my students, I want them to just write down zero point eight nine nine. So we're going to do that here. Zero point eight nine nine okay there's my three sig figs make sure zero point eight nine nine that's going to round the eight's going to change to a nine traditional rounding rules tradition traditional rounding rules for my students okay so here let's go ahead and put the units on this will be grams per cubic centimeters so that's c m cubed okay and we're done. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. And uh, if you have any que uh, any questions or anything, just shoot me uh, a message on YouTube or to my email account at wilwhy.com, and I will reply. All right, guys, you have a great night.